What's cooking, everybody? Welcome back to the O Show Podcast, episode 476. We are presented by Mayweather Boxing and Fitness in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mayweather Boxing and Fitness is an inclusive, high-intensity fitness experience developed by the champ Floyd Money Mayweather himself, formulated with the perfect combination of boxing strength and cardio conditioning intervals designed to make you look good, feel good, and leave you with more than just a great sweat. Head on down to Mayweather Boxing and Fitness in Scottsdale. We're also sponsored by betonline.ag. Sign up for that 50% bonus by using the promo code capital BLEAV50. It is uh, wild card week in the NFL this week. And our guest today uh, is Mr. Darnell McDonald. And I think two days ago when we hopped on a Zoom call, we both picked Alabama over Georgia. We were dead wrong on that. So if we bet on that, we would have lost a lot of money. True that. True and that, man. I did. I said. I, I did say, and I said, man, it's tough to beat a team twice in the same year. Um, but hats off to to Georgia Bulldogs because it, it's just they have a, a World Series, they have a national title. It's just meant for GA this year. Oh, really? So you got ties. You knew what was going on. So you, no, you, I really. I just they deserve to be number one, man. They they they, uh, they played a hell of a game. Wow, I didn't know they were that good. To be honest with you, I I actually pr- I was gonna my big prediction going into that game was that it was gonna be under thirty five points total. And going into the fourth quarter, I was pretty dead on. And then they started piling on the points, and then piled on the separation, and then they would win their first title in forty one years. So it, it it was very fun to watch. If anything else, you know, like it's kind of like. You know, seeing the Patriots go to the Super Bowl over and over again during the Brady Belichick dynasty and then watching them lose, like it, it felt good. You know, those two Eli Manning Super Bowls, it felt <laughs> good to watch them lose in the Super Bowl. But at the same time, you respect and you had to respect Nick Saban, too, for the uh, press conference that he held, keeping his players in the room, talking heavily and highly about his players and the way they played. I mean, that that's leadership in itself, like the perfect example of leadership in what I saw. Well, we were... Uh, talking a little bit about Bartolo Colon before we came on. You uh, you didn't like facing Bartolo Colon, I take it? Bartolo, yeah, that dude's legendary, man. Um, I'm telling a story about spring training with the Red Sox. Bartolo, I think he took a year off, takes a year off, comes back. He's, he's uh, in spring training with the Yanks. So I go up there, Tampa, I think I faced him two or three times. Didn't get one full swing off. Not one. Not one full. I'm talking about a full swing. The guy, he's throwing pitches. They were going to the plate. They get to the plate, stop, and they just go. I get back to I get back to uh, the next day. I got Eucalyptus. Dust. They all talking shit. Oh, man, oh, you didn't get a full swing. To do I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there telling them how nasty this guy was, right? Um, I think he went on. I got to look it up, man. And I think this was in, what, 2012. I think it was in 2000, 2012. Look up uh, how many games Bartolo won that year. It was a lot. It was his only year with the Yankees in 2011, I think. 2011. So you were you were in Boston in 2011, right? So that that would make sense. 2011, yes. Bobby V, the Bobby V uh, era. Everyone's and, favorite uh, era of Red Sox baseball. Absolutely. I'll just keep it at that. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Um, the next year they won the World Series. Very true. Very true. That, I mean, that was a very impressive year. The way they came together, the, the beards, the beard mentality, that was very fun to see. Even as a Yankee fan, I'm like, this is a cool culture. I like this right now. That was really cool. Boston Strong. Uh, I, I, I think Pedroia was picking on you the most because there was like nobody better at cheating on inside fastballs than Dustin Pedroia, from what I saw. Maybe like Gary Sheffield would be the only one I compare him to, but he was the best at cheating on inside pitches. And uh, Chipper Jones and Garrett Anderson. They step in the bucket. And, they, and what's the pri- what I don't get is pitchers, they keep throwing it in there. Like, these guys are stepping in the bucket, waiting for you to throw it in there. Man. Yeah, Fenway, that's not something you want to do. Oh, my God. You, you, the pity, but you hit a home run basketball. in your uh, first at bat at Fenway, right? Or at least in a Red Sox uniform? I can still see those scenes. 
it was a uh, curveball, Darren Oliver, and I can see those Oof. things. I can see that ball pop out of his hand, and it went right to my barrel. And man, I'm so thankful for that, man. I, 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 he, Darren Oliver should get a Christmas card for me every year, man. Because if, if it wasn't for that that at bat, I probably wouldn't be in front of you right now. That's a name I probably haven't heard in ten years growing up watching baseball. Darren Oliver, lefty and, specialist. Yeah. He's a, a last of a dying breed. I got. He, I think he probably played for 25 years. Knowing his self awareness, fastball, curveball, think he had a change, and just just did his thing year in and year out. So thank you, Darren Oliver. Man, did would you say the uh, the Red Sox culture out of all the teams that you played for was the coolest to play in front of that crowd at Fenway? I actually have a follow up question to this after you answer this. Um, talking about, you know, the culture that they build and kind of the family that they had. But would you say that was the coolest culture that you played for? The best, besides uh, my high school, Cherry Creek. Um, yeah, it was it was such an unbelievable experience. It was all about the culture. The culture starts with even the people that worked out the, in the stadium, outside the stadium, park the cars like man there's so many good people all over and a lot of those people have been there for a long 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 time right and the culture of uh what i also loved about it is culture of winning right it's win win and make money <laughs> my follow-up question to make that money and win ah who, who I, i'd prioritize both either or works but my follow-up question to that uh, given the culture and everything that they did, is who is your favorite interviewer of all time? For me specifically, I grew up on Howard Stern, Joe Rogan today is why I got into this. Uh, growing up listening to Don Orsillo on Nesson or Michael Kay on the Yes Network getting into broadcasting. Who is your favorite interviewer? Because I have a video of someone that uh, you might say could be one of your favorite interviewers. You're hilarious. I think I'm, I, I, I may think I know where you're going with this, but um man that's a that's a tough question man. i i, I used to love I, I loved arsenio hall man really I loved arsenio hall the dog pound back in the day um i'm trying to think in in sports sports wise uh you said don arcillo don is don is the, he's the man jerry remy rest in peace yeah love that dude the rim dog um Hey, Peter Gammons. I love, oh, I love yeah. Peter Gammons. Um, so much knowledge. That dude's a walking museum, encyclopedia. Every time I talk to Peter Gammons, I learn something new. And he always has like a, a new player or somebody that, man, watch out. Look, look out for this guy right here. Um, so, yeah, what do you got for me? Who do you, th who, who do you think? I think you know what it is. Zach, play, uh, play the, kit, the clip of uh, Darnell's daughter here. I don't know if we got audio up here, but this is very cool that they let um, let you guys do this. Right? And she's good. It's a great segment. Probably drew in a lot of ratings on the on the uh, pre-show during batting practice. Red Sox small talk. I love how he uh, called you the predator with your dreads. You gonna show, are you going to show this guy? I am. Petey. The captain. See, this has to be cool. Like, what does she do now? A decade later, is, does she want to pursue journalism? Is, is it like not even in the realm of possibility? Not even an interest? Yo, she does. She wants to go back to Boston. <laughs> work with Nesson. She's already got the real. She got that, that the swag and the attitude, too. Uh, Awesome. How many different um, segments did they do? Was this just the one? This is the one I found. I literally looked up Darnell McDonald highlights on YouTube, and this was the first thing that came up. <laughs> it, it should be because this is this is hilarious. I'm just I'm just looking at that's another thing that I loved about Boston is uh, you know how they include included your family. Family there, and so this is something that stuck with my daughter, and she actually. She's a junior, and she wants to pursue this later on in her career. Now, was it something that she, like, was it something that she did hear and thought, like, man, at this age, at, I mean, how old was she? 
Yeah, so I'm trying to I'm trying to think. She was probably um, 10, 11 yeah, years ago, right? Yeah, at least, at least. She's 16 now, and uh, you know, taller than me. But yeah, absolutely. From doing that, having that experience, um, she knows like that. I want to do this. She's like, I want to look at Boston University. I, I you know, sort of like I remember when I was a kid. And my uncle played for the, the, the Rams. He played for the, the Los Angeles Rams, and he played with uh, Eric Dickerson. And I remember when uh, he took us over to Eric Dickerson's house, and I remember he, he had two uh, Rottweilers, these German Rottweilers. And uh, just to, like this experience and being around a professional, I knew at that age right then, like I wanted to be a professional athlete. I mean, that's such a cool backstory to have when it comes to, like, finding out what you want to do with your life. And she's going to have that to look back on and be like, this is the moment where I wanted to get into journalism or on-air hosting. I think that's really, really cool. And in, a, in a culture that is insanely accepting of it and insanely cool to be around. Would you say Chicago was a close second, being a part of that 16 run, being the mental skills coordinator? Yeah, for sure. Chicago was... You took the blueprint from Boston and then you take it to Chicago and um, success leaves clues, right? And so you just you take that and you take it over here and do the same thing. And, you know, you bring in Joe Madden and um, the left-hander, shout out John Lester. Oh, man, what a, what a career. What a career. I hope he goes to the Hall of Fame. But uh, yeah, especially when, and I tell people this stuff, it doesn't matter if it's sports, um, you know, corporate, whatever, like this is how you win. And I, I just told you, you see my daughter on there. I got my family, family, family atmosphere, um, a lot of connections. Um, you talk about the, the, the culture. That's what, that's what the culture is. Connections, people, people business. So at what point did you decide, because again, I do want to get into SVA, Satyaya, which is the full pronunciation of it, SVA sport. I made sure I knew that too. You told me that we did an interview three, four years ago, probably one of my first interviews that I ever did. And you were explaining that to me. There's you with the hat. Tremendous apparel line, by the way, too, if you want to head to the website. Love the Cubby Bear logo as well. But what kind of turned you on to the you know, the mental skills side of things, the meditation side of things as a player? Because being a professional athlete brings its own anxiety and, you know, nerves to it and just in high pressure situations, you know, making an error in the field and getting your head straight and just everyday life. You know, you being a dad, there's probably a ton of stress that comes with that. You know, I'm speculating. I don't know, but you, you could probably attest to that. What what kind of, again, kind of set your soul on fire when it came to that side of things? <laughs> well, I didn't know that interview was three years ago. That was three years ago. I was okay, man. You've got you've really gotten good. You've really improved. I know. I I mean, I don't like looking back at those interviews, but yeah, that was freshman year in college. That was probably one of the first five interviews I ever did on this show. I think you were episode sixteen. This is episode four hundred and seventy-six. So we've come a long way since then. Thank you, sir. Keep going. So back to the mental, the mental skills. Well, I mean, you look at my career, um, you know, the first round draft pick, um, you know, probably number one high school prospect coming out in 1997. Um, you know, if you would have asked me when I was 18 years old, I would have told you, man, I'm going to go to uh, the minor leagues for a year, maybe two years. And then I'm going to spend the rest of my career in the big leagues. And so, um, you know, obviously it, it didn't it didn't happen that way. Uh, I spent 10 years in minor leagues, grinding, journeyman, a um, lot of failure. Um, I, and I tell kids now, um, you know, in high school, I didn't fail. I didn't deal with failure. I mean, I hit 606 as a senior. That's no failure. Um, so it was like the, the gift and the curse. And then you get in a pro ball and all of a sudden you fail a lot. Okay, so how do you know how to deal with something that you've never done, right? You don't. Um, so I had to learn a lot of things on uh, just trial and error and um, a lot of bus rides. And you just, uh, you know, I got to, what, 2013 when I retired. I remember my last year with Chubb, the PCL. I played in the PCL, and I, was, I just knew, like, 
I'll never go back to the PTO ever again. That ruined my career. Those 4.30 uh, wake-up calls, my, I couldn't do it. So, um, uh, you know, they said, you know, you're, we're not going to make the team, but we'd love to have you be a part of our organization, which was, uh, man, a tremendous blessing because i tell you what, that uh, my last year playing, when you kind of know it, you're kind of at the end. Mm-hmm. Um and it's like, man, I don't, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Um, start trying to think about these things out of family. Um, so to be able to to go into baseball, transition into baseball on the other side. Uh, the first year I did a little bit of everything. My second year, then we're gonna we're gonna develop a mental skills program. And um, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. You know, if you'd asked me 10 years before that, if I, if I was going to be doing mental skills, I probably would have laughed at you, you know. So at that time, it just it worked out perfect because, um, you know, I was doing this this mindfulness and learning more about meditation and yoga just for myself and, man, just dealing with stuff that I was dealing with in, in my life. And as I got deeper in my practice, I started to understand how um, – these things related to baseball as far as being present, being in the zone, um, you know, so, so many, so many different benefits, but I really, um, you know, you talk about playing the game pitch to pitch, um, one pitch at a time. Well, the best way for us to become present is to become aware of our body or our breath. So check this out, Jack, Jack. I want you to Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. And then you're going to pause at the top. And then exhale back through your nose. And did that breath feel different than any breath that you've taken since we've been? That was the best breath that I took all day long. We'll see. Yeah, now you're judging the breath too. But um, yeah, absolutely. Like, so imagine if we could... uh, focus on the baseball or focus on anything that we were doing, just like you focused on that breath that you just took, right? That's a, that's a superpower. So this is a superpower that we have. We can develop this skill of being present, being in the moment. And like Joe Madden, um, you know, he had a mantra back in 2016. Um, I don't want you to be uh, perfect. I want you to be present. You know, perfect, be present. And the way to be present is to breathe. Man. Yeah, calm is a superpower. That I think that's a great message as well as a great slogan for you guys with F or SVA. Do you was it it was literally twenty seventeen when you decided what was it, a twenty two hundred hour course that you had to take? Yeah, so yeah, I got I I yeah, did my yoga teacher training. It was, uh, I think it was 2015, 2016. Um, back in uh, Phoenix, Arizona with uh, Yogi John, Modern Yoga. Uh, he was someone that I just, you know, I really connected with. And I, I, I connected with him. I, like, I want to learn more yoga from this guy. And he's, he's kind of, he's like a, a superstar because so many people have been were telling me about, you know, you got to do what a Yogi John's class. You got to do one of his classes. So, I finally got an opportunity to do one of his classes, and I knew right then I was like, I want to more, I want to learn more yoga from him. Um, you know, he's a big uh, baseball fan as well. He's a Diamondbacks fan. Unfortunately, he did become a Cubs fan in 2016 because he actually went to the World Series with with me in 2016, and so he. Uh, but he still, he, he still, he hang, He's a he's a diehard. Diamondbacks fan. Have you heard of a diehard Diamondbacks fan? Not one. And I live in Arizona. Exactly. They're not real. So, so bless, bless his heart. But um, yeah, great, awesome teacher. And I got deeper in my practice. I did. I got my my certification. And um, I, I really really was passionate about teaching and carrying on this messages to other people because I knew how much it was helping me. And um, when I say helping me to this day, I think the, the, the two most important things that we can empower our kids or, or any kids or anyone with is the ability to self-regulate and a growth mindset. 
Man. And that, you know, the yoga and the meditation is a way to practice this self-regulation. And as we talk, you know, I was telling you before about all the failure that um, that I was going through in, in pro ball. You know, you can fail seven out of ten times and you're still a, a, a great player. It's a lot of failure. So how you deal with that failure, and uh, most importantly, you know, it's not what happens to you, but it's how you respond to what happens to you, and that's all that matters. And so, uh, you know, this is just one way to give ourselves a, uh, a choice and be intentional and, and um, hopefully the more things that we can do with a purpose, the better. And we just create this little space to give ourselves a choice to like, okay, I could go this way or this way. And I've definitely been close to both those ways before. So, man, this is, it's, I'd say, you know, this is a lifesaver for me, for sure. Who would you say in particular has benefited the most from, you know, the trainings that you offer, not only with FCA, but as well as, you know, being a mental skills coordinator for as long as you were with the Cubs and, you know, coaching and mentoring some guys, just hanging out with people, whether it be on the baseball field, at the golf course, at the gym, just hanging out with people. Who do you, who do you think changed the most after kind of realizing this and kind of implementing this into their everyday life when it came to the, like, pre-performance and then post-performance of this? Um, I think one thing that really that sticks out in my mind that, that will always stick out is game seven of the World Series. And it was kind of a, you know, you got Anthony Rizzo joking around um, with Tom LaStella and, and David Ross. Uh, and, and you know he's like, man, I'm a I'm a glass case of emotions right now. Oh, he was so nervous. You know, I don't know. Yeah, he's like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. And um, David Ross turns and he's like, man, I know. All you can do is breathe. Yeah, you need to just breathe. And to hear this conversation, joking, jokingly and not joking, because that's how really like like the first, I always remind people, man, are you breathing? That makes sure you're breathing. Like so much, so much that it's almost like, it was, a, it was like a joke, right? Um, but to hear, this is game seven of the World Series. And you're talking about the Chicago Cubs that haven't, you know, it's been 108 years since uh, the last championship. And these guys are talking about breathing. And I was like, man, that's so awesome. Man, that was pre-Raja Davis game-tying home run in the bottom of the eighth, too. I can only imagine what you guys were feeling after that. Well, yeah, if you watch the full clip, um, David Ross, like, you know, just wait until you get, wait till the ninth inning. It's going to be, you know, even worse. And, yeah, it got worse. It got real, it got real worse. And it was uh, the first time. I'm not going to lie, man. I was sitting there, you know, at the game, and I was like, this curse might be real. <laughs> Rajay Davis just hit a home run. Off of Raldis Chapman. I mean, come on. And then it starts raining. And so that, that raining, that delay is that pause, right? That I was telling you about, that space, right? And then we can make a choice. And those guys made a choice. Um, Jay Hay, Jay Hay calls it a team player only meeting and he lets the guys know he reminds them hey we're the best team in baseball we're gonna go out here and we're gonna win this game right so those guys reset they set their intention and they went out and uh Kyle Schorber gets on first base you got it Al Moore comes in the pinch run heads up baseball play tags up on a fly ball gets to second base and then uh Cirilla Ben Zobris I think one two count gets the you know that uh, brings in uh, Almora from second base, man, and it, it was just uh, it's how mindfulness played out in Game Seven of the World Series. Now the curse is broken. You know, you know, it's years before the the Cubs weren't able to reset things after things happened. But what was different about this 2016 team was. They were able to reset. It's not what happens to you. It's how you respond to it. And they responded. Man, they always say that the uh, the gods kind of sh shine down on that rain, like the Ernie Bankses of the world and, and, and the Santos of the world were there. Like, it's going to rain now. We're going to give you guys 35, 40 minutes to regroup and uh, re-strategize here. And then that 10th inning was insane. 
For sure. Like what? Like out of nowhere, it just starts raining. Raining. Like 100%. The baseball guys are looking out. It's 108 years, and it, the Cubs are gonna win the World Series that night because, um, yeah, man, I'm not, you couldn't like Rajay Davis home run distraction, rain delay comes, they pull the tarp, another distraction. So these are all things that could have distracted, and um, you know, fortunately for Tom Ricketts, that the Cubs were able to reset. Who would you say is uh, someone that you looked at as? You know, not like inspiring. Obviously, you said before that this wasn't something that you really thought you were going to do until you started doing it. But, you know, you being, you know, the mental skills coordinator of the Cubs then, kind of kind of preaching this stuff that we're kind of talking about, who was that guy for you during your playing days? Or was that non-existent in the mid to late 2000s? Yeah, man, I would say more, actually, when I got to the Red Sox, when I got to the Red Sox at, we had Bob Tewksbury there, um, and it was really it was re- it was refreshing. Um, just cause, you know he played he played the game even though he was a pitcher, one of the coolest guys I ever met. Uh, you know he made me a, a a Bob Marley visualization tape CD that I used to listen to. Um, you know before the game, so uh, Tewksbury, and then obviously being able to. Um, when uh, Ken, 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 rest in peace, Ken Revisa, pioneer of mental skills, um, was over there with the Cubs and just to sit and be able to watch and learn from him was, <laughs> you talk about that, that was my, um, that was my education, on, yeah. on job education, man. That dude, I mean, he basically him and Harvey Dorfman started sports psychology and baseball. Like he, he, he was, he couldn't even go in the locker room and then to see where, how far he had come and he's chilling at the world series in the locker room. Like, <laughs> um, but I really, what I really took from Ken, number one, man, he cared about people. You knew he cared about you just by the way he said hello to you two inches from your face. Hey man, how you doing? Um, and then the simplicity that he taught with, it was so simple. Like it was so simple and it just all made sense. And it was just like, Oh yeah. You know, don't shit in a box. Okay. Right. You can, <laughs> and I think you, you, know, you can meet tons of people and I have a Ken Revisa story. And, uh, you know, it's probably all true. But they, if you listen to them, they're all real simple uh, strategies that you can use to be your best. And it's as simple as that, too. And with everything that you got going on now, again, this is – you got your – you went through your training 2017, so that's a good five, six years now that you've been doing this. What What are some of your future goals when trying to grow your, mes- your message and your vision, not with just Sit Yaya, but overall from a mentality standpoint, trying to help people that, you know, cross your path? Well, you said it already, right? Calm is a superpower. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I look at – you look at any – good performer i mean this tom brady like you look at Derek jeter like what i love about him you never know if it's the first quarter first inning or the ninth inning and you know the key you do all this practice man you see uh, you played against guys that are really good in practice but then can we can we execute when those lights come on can we execute when um you know, it's bases loaded ninth inning. And so not only calm uh, is your superpower, but it's also like, that's how, like calm equal, to me, calm equals clutch. Like Steph Curry, clutch. Curry Bryant, clutch. David Ortiz, clutch. And you notice that they're always calm and what helps you uh, become calm is being present, being in the moment. Um, I'm not sure if, you, if you, you probably watched the last dance, right? And they said, uh, you know, Michael Jordan's greatest gift was the gift of being present, being in the moment. And he wasn't thinking about the, um, you know, the 10, 15 shots that he missed. And that game's on the line. He's, he's thinking about this shot that he's getting ready to make. And so, um, you know, my message is, is that's a, that's a skill. 
man, we can we can all it doesn't take any talent to develop it, and we can get we can all get better at that. Man, just well, like you did, you did it already, Jack. You you took that breath. And you're like, man, that felt great. It did feel awesome. I mean, I mean, with everything you got going on, and obviously we're gonna get a lot more into it in the future about SVA again. Satyaya Sport. For those that don't know, Calm is a superpower. You can head on to the website as well. Uh, Darnell, we're definitely gonna have to talk more about this and how to uh, uh, spread this message especially again here's the look right here SVA sport for those of you that don't know Darnell McDonald the founder right there um, and again thanks so much for uh, taking the time today to talk about this stuff I know we're running a little bit low on time so I do want to wrap this up this was episode uh, 476 of the podcast and again Darnell McDonald if you haven't checked it out SVA sport that's set yeah, yeah sport head on to their website now we're also sponsored by these guys right here Mayweather Boxing and Fitness in Scottsdale sign up for that membership today as well as make your picks at betonline.ag uh, it is wild card weekend you got any uh, any big picks this weekend in the NFL Darnell yes sir I got uh, we got uh, Niners Dallas Boy, Kyle Shanahan, they're going to do their thing. They're hot right now. Um, you know, they should have a lot of confidence. They're playing some, some good football. And I, I like the fact that they um, – man, it's been a tough year. Like, they've gone through a lot of adversity. So, I like that. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna step out there on one more. I'm going to step out there and I'm going to say Big Ben and the Steelers are going to win. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say like Pats over Bills or something. Something more, a little bit more realistic than that. I don't know about that. Right. I think this is his swan song. That's my, that's my sleeper pick. Steelers over, the, over KC. Well, I'm watching that game now, man. Shock oh, my world. God. Well, I can't wait for that <laughs> this weekend, man. Zach, let's end on that. Hit the lights, man.